I have four crop growing tips that are instantly going to help you this season, so there's no reason to wait. These tips I'm going to provide for you are something that my wife and I do in our garden every single season. It's elevated our garden from being average to far above average. Tip number one is high intensity planting. That means you plant a lot of crops really close together. This can be done with multiple crops. Some crops can be planted much closer than you think. A lot of gardeners don't like planting things close together because they're afraid that the crops won't do as well. And I'm here to tell you that once we started doing that, we actually saw that the crops increased in quality, they did not decrease in quality. And if your crops have big gaps in between them after they've grown in full size, there's an indication that you're not planting them quite close enough together. A lot of times the plants, if they do touch, they'll compete with one another and actually grow up. If you think about it, if you're planting six plants instead of 12 plants, you're just not going to get as much. Tip number two is intercropping. Intercropping is simply when you're using multiple species of crops in one general area. Most of the crops you plant in your garden like having friends. They like being surrounded by other crops. In this raised bed, for example, this is a four by five raised bed. It also has an arch trellis over the top of it, this cattle panel arch trellis. We grow a number of different crops in here. Last summer, we grew two pepper plants, a large zucchini plant, onions scattered throughout, a couple volunteer regular potatoes, and we had a whole bunch of butternut squash over top of this cattle panel arch trellis. I think we had eight, four on each side. Before we move on to tip number three, I wanna share something with you that I'm really excited about. I am creating an online homesteading community. I'm super excited about this because this gives people like you and me, like-minded people, a chance to connect and grow together. It's going to offer a course to refine your skills, learn new skills that you can teach other people. There's going to be a forum page for quality discussions, in-depth discussions. There's also going to be events like live streams and community events where we can connect and grow with one another. It's going to be available this April in 2024. And if you join in April, you automatically get a 50% discount off of your membership. More news is going to be coming up. I'll keep you updated in future videos and YouTube posts. So stick around for that. I hope you join me. It's going to be really great. Tip number three is growing vertically and horizontally. If you have anything at your house or homestead that you can use to get the plants off the ground, use it. Some of the ways we like to keep our food off the ground and trellis them are on these cattle panels. Another way we keep food off the ground and trellis them are on these limbs right here. These are just from fallen trees I find in the woods. I cut them to length. I put them together, that's a free resource many of us have access to. So over here is a teepee trellis. I use jute twine to put it together. These are all six foot pieces. That's an eight foot long piece over there to this teepee structure. Eight more feet right here on this going across to this teepee structure. And in between, I just put two more limbs going up like that to add more area for crops to grow up. Last summer, we grew a ton of food in this raised bed right here. Because we had so much food growing up here, it freed up the area down here in the raised bed itself. We had onions down here, flowers planted for pollination, volunteer potatoes, tomatoes. We had all kinds of things growing on the ground as well as up here on these teepee trellises. It was a beautiful thing. It kind of looked like an organized mess, but because we had things off the ground, it freed up all this space on the bottom where things could grow. And again, I use this raised bed as an example earlier, the small four by five raised bed, where you have two peppers in the front, zucchini, you had a whole bunch of onions planted around, as well as eight butternut squash plants over here. Since we raised the butternut squash plants up in the air, it freed up all the space below it, not only helping disease with the butternut squash, but it also helps with pruning, it also helps with harvesting. Another way we get plants off the ground is with this four foot wire fence. All we do is zip tie it to these posts right here that are in the ground. These posts we get for free. And this is where we grow a lot of our green beans. Every year I grow six tomato plants right here using the Florida weave system. I grow three on that side and three over here. I start by weaving a rope in between the plants after it's been tied off on this post right here. I weave them back and forth, tie it off to this post and keep repeating. The higher the plants go, the more rope I need. Over here with these posts, we've got one, two, three, and four. And you can even see some of this twine left on here from last year that I need to get rid of before this season. If you don't want to do the Florida weave system, you can just take the twine and go back and forth between all these posts, leave a few inches in between, 
and you can grow up peas, green beans, sweet potatoes, any vining plant that will grow up them. That's basically a free resource right here. It doesn't cost a lot. If you don't want to use jute twine like this that's decomposable and you eventually have to throw away and replace, you don't have to. You can buy much stronger rope that'll last you for many years. So just right there we've got rope with this system. We've got these trellises, the teepee trellis, arch trellises over there. Back here we have the wire fencing on this side that we grow our beans and sometimes peas on. So there's really a never ending amount of possibilities when it comes to trellising your food. Sometimes my viewers mention to me that it's so cool that I use trellises on top of my raised beds. Some of my viewers say, I've never really thought about that. I either trellis something or I put it in the ground or on a raised bed. Never together. I either do one or the other. But I just think, why not? Why not diversify what you have, grow things up and on the ground in the same location because you want to utilize your space. This is especially important for urban gardeners that don't have a lot of space. We have acres here, but most of it you could never use as a garden because it's wooded or on a super steep hill or it doesn't get enough sunlight. So we utilize this space and we maximize this space because we don't have a lot of it elsewhere. So we have to grow up, we have to grow up, we have to plant intensely to get that high stem count in a small area. Please don't get mad at me for tip number four because tip number four is use raised beds instead of planting in the ground. Let me explain why because I know that some people get upset with that one. When you plant in raised beds, you automatically have a head start at having a good harvest the very first year. The reasons why are because it's way easier to manage weeding. The second reason is it's easier to intensely plant crops. If you think about how people would conventionally plant in the ground, they till it up, they plant in rows, maybe one crop per row or whatever, and they have all that space in between those rows. That's great for weeding your garden, watering your garden, tending your plants, harvesting, but there's a lot of space that isn't being used. But in a raised bed, you pretty much use all of the space, especially if you are into square foot gardening, for example. I'm not saying you need to be a square foot gardener, but you utilize the space better in a raised bed. The other reason is because typically, if you use a raised bed, you're filling it with high quality soil that you purchase right away. The native soil that you're going to be digging up and maybe tilling or using for the first couple of years in your garden usually, usually is not as good as the soil you purchase from the store. Now again, I have no problems with people planting in the ground. We did that for several years. We had some good harvest from them, but when we switched to raised beds, that's when we noticed the biggest increase in quality of plants and the biggest increase of yields and harvests. You can have really great soil planting in the ground, but typically it's going to take years to develop that soil by amending it with fertilizer and compost and other things. If you want to get going right away and have very good luck your very first year, I would recommend using raised beds instead. I actually have a fifth tip that I think is really important. I know I said four, but I'm going with five because this one is often overlooked. But if your goal is to have a really big harvest, which I think it should be if you're going to be a gardener, why put in all the work just to have a petty harvest at the end of the season? You want to plant things that have high yields to begin with. You want to plant crops that typically have high yields. And I say that because sometimes we pick these exotic kind of crops or crops that really don't grow well in our area or these weird crops that kind of look cool on the picture of the seed packet. Sweet corn is a good example of that. If you're planting sweet corn and you have a modest backyard garden like we do, that is a waste of space. It's nothing wrong with planting it, but don't expect big yields and don't expect that to feed your family very much because you don't get a lot of sweet corn on sweet corn plants unless you plant a ton of it. And over the years, my wife and I have figured this out. We line up our grocery list with things we like to eat that can grow in our garden and if they produce a lot to begin with. Let's check out some of the seeds I bought this year. A lot of our seeds come from mmigardener.com. I am not sponsored by them, but I've had nothing but good luck from all of their seeds. So there's some onions. We'll get to this in a little bit. This is a winter squash, spaghetti squash. My wife really likes that. So we're gonna add that to our butternut squash this year. Cilantro, we have a lot of food that requires that for flavoring. Gold beets, I've never done before. I don't like beets, but I've heard the golden ones are really good in case you don't like the conventional ones. Broccoli, like I said, you have to have that. Another onion, salad bowl mix. These are not all of our seeds, but just some. Carrots, we do really well on carrots here. Cucumbers for cucumbers and pickling. These are our really good 
ever so famous Waltham butternut squash that we get every year. We could save the seeds, I suppose. I do like supporting him, and I know that he gives very good deals, and he's very reasonable to his customers. And cabbage, every year I do what's called like a fun thing or whatever where I know this is all going to work, and this is not all of them. I have other seeds too and elsewhere. Other things are growing. So I want to try doing something fun. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this this year or next year, but since I know we've got whatever, 95% of our garden pretty solid and it's probably going to be successful unless something really weird goes on. I think I'm going to try this in one spot, maybe just do a couple plants and see if we can get a good harvest. Being Wisconsin, it's kind of tough because obviously things like this, like melons, don't grow so well in cold environments. So good seed is very important. That's my point. And of course, as you probably know, none of this matters unless you use really good soil and really good seed. I say that in a lot of my videos, but it's so true. You can be the best gardener in the world. You can have the coolest trellises, the best raised beds. If your soil's bad, your seed's bad, you won't have a good garden, let alone a good harvest. Going down to my basement instead of the grocery store is really cool. One of the reasons why we homesteaded. Having lots of plants, lots of fresh food, going to my freezer, grabbing something off the shelf, grabbing a canning thing that we did back in the fall. It's just really cool having all that food right here at our house rather than relying on the broken food chain which often will let you down or expensive costs in the grocery store. If you use those four tips which actually ended up being five tips you won't regret it. You'll have instant success your very first year you try them. Thanks for watching. <music>